In this tutorial video, we'll go through how to create a pylon. First step I'm going to take here is figure out how long the pylon should be in the x dimension. So I'm creating a measurement from two picking points, and you can see the x component there, which you, have, you can show by going through the options. So we're going to use an airfoil, much the same as we would for the wing or any of the horizontal or vertical surfaces we used before. Again, remember you have to have a new part open in Katia and it has to be on the, the top window when you create this. So we use our measurement of the X direction to create the right scale. Remember to convert to millimeters. So the process for creating pylon is exactly the same as it is for the wing and the horizontal tail. Okay. And just like we did for the previous aerodynamic surfaces, we're going to make a sketch in the top-down view of what the of where the pylon lies. And we're going to just create some wireframe geometry in which we can use the constraint dimensions as references when we create the 3D geometry. For the pylons, we don't have any sweep, so we're just going to do the root cord and the tip cord. If you're working with a flexible design, maybe you need to create some parameters that might be used in the future, whether or not they are right now. For example, if you might include a some sweep or dihedral on the pylons, it's good practice to just incorporate all those things now, even if the angles would be zero. So that way it's easier to update it later. So we're going to build the entire thing within this part. Again, it's good practice to do a scaling where you don't scale it at all, just in case you need to scale it later. So you don't have to delete everything. And uh, translation. We're just going to create the port side pylon, and then once we have that created, we'll reflect it over to the other side, and we'll have one continuous pylon, which we can then cut the middle out of using the fuselage once we get it into the assembly. So we copied our pylon geometry sketch over into this part, in case you missed that. And now I'm using those cons those constraints from the sketch on the 3D geometry. And again, I'm also adding in some translates 
and scalings even though they're they're not changing the shape just in case it needs to be edited later so that that was the sketch I have it in an engines part. We're not gonna do we're not gonna do the engines in this video, they'll be in a, a later video. And the nacelles will also be in here. Again, a later video. So now creating a multi-section surface. And now we will reflect this over using the symmetry tool. Reflect it over the XZ plane to get the starboard side of the pylon. So when I created the new part, I did it in the product. We right clicked on the product and selected insert new component part. So although it was in a different window, it was still within this product. And if you did it as a new part in a different way, you could still copy it into this product by right click or you could right click on Beer 23 and then click existing component, insert existing component, and then find your part. So now here I'm just putting it in the its proper location relative to the rest of the plane. Use, constraining it to our body axis part, which has our fuselage, station zero, butt line zero, and water line zero planes. So you can just kind of drag it in the in a place and then create a constraint. The constraint tools are the ones I have floating off of the off of the bar. And so here I'm going to change the size of the airfoil there. And that was pretty easy because of the instruments we had in place prior. So it looks a little small compared to the drawing. That looks good. Not that the drawing is necessarily accurate, but that's how the pylon's created.